What is up everyone? My name is Imani LaRussa and this is part three of how I created this. In today's episode, we're going to be going over scene three. I use After Effects along with Cinema 4D. It's kind of Cinema 4D heavy, but I will go over everything along with uh, using Red Giant plugins in this. So let's get started. Moving into scene three is a stage of being a teenager. And I wanted this scene, like this character, to have this overwhelming sense of confusion. I think teenagers are constantly confronted with having to choose what they plan on doing for the rest of their lives. And there's so many doors and so many opportunities and paths, and it's a lot. So today we're actually gonna start out in Cinema 4D instead of starting out in After Effects. I'm gonna preface this by saying I am After Effects native. Cinema 4D comes second in my skills, so a lot of this is kind of winging, but it all really worked well. Because I had a great reference point from the physical sculpture that I created, it really helped when it came to making it 3D. So I first started out with a cube and then worked inside of that. And then making the stairs, I started off with a cube and made it rectangular, along with making it a child of a cloner. Increased the count of that and then I have beautiful stairs. And for the side of the walls of the stairs, I went ahead and created a spline path. I don't know if there's an easier way of doing this because it was pretty time consuming to do all of this, but it was also kind of relaxing at the same time. And then once I had my path, I made that a child of the extrude, creating the sides of the walls. So for the door, I created a door shape uh, out of the spline pen tool. And then I added the spline uh, rectangle shape. And then and I added the sweep extrusion. So the idea of the setup for this is that the spline is what you want the overall shape to be and the rectangle is like how would you like the edges to be shaped. So imagine the shape, like the spine uh, rectangle that you have, and imagine it in a universe where only rectangles live. So everything is going to have sharp edges, no matter what your spline is that you created with your pen tool. If it lives in the rectangle universe, it's going to have rectangle edges. And same as if you did something like the circle spline, everything that you put under that will live in that circular world. So it'll have very uh, round edges like a circle. If you notice on the right hand side, there's a lot of different materials on each of the stairs. And that's because I was trying to figure out which one fit best closely to the original illustration. So it was a lot of tedious figuring out what fit what. Also, you'll notice that everything is in black and white grayscale because we constantly are tweaking the colors. Like I'm a very indecisive artist, so I didn't want to set a permanent color in here because if I did, I would have to put it in here and then render it out every time it worked or didn't work to After Effects. Using this grayscale allows you to have more flexibility with color effects like Colorama or Tritone. And then I am just going to add a simple camera movement. I went into the F curve to change uh, the way that it came in or animated in. So I wanted it to start off a little slow and then end up going a lot faster towards the end because that was going to be our transition cut into the next scene. So doing something like this is very tedious and there were so many things that I was constantly tweaking and changing. So now I'm glad to move over to the After Effects portion. So let's start off with the background. So because we are rotating into the shot, I need to make sure that my background is following the motion as well. And behind the backgrounds, you'll see that I made different shape layers for the different door openings because I wanted them to seem like they were in different places. So this is what the door openings look like behind the walls. Next, I wanna break down the face. So this rig was created using joysticks and sliders, which allows you to create a controller that will be used to move your object in any direction that it's put in. It's not gonna allow me to play it back because joysticks and sliders is super heavy on my computer. So I'm gonna speed this up so that you can get a rough idea of how the rig worked. So I'm gonna show you exactly how joysticks and sliders works. I'm gonna use it using a face, but you could really use any type of object that you want. The idea is that you are gonna create five poses 
and those five poses are going to be on the controller. So every time you move your controller, you're essentially moving from one pose to another. And you set these poses by setting up keyframes and you can use the transform setting keyframes, you could use effects setting keyframes, just as long as it's set up in the five areas of the keyframes. The first pose is gonna be the neutral pose. The next is going to be your right pose. After that, your left and then up and then down. Joysticks and Sliders has a super simple, easy tutorial on their channel, so I would definitely check that out if you're looking into getting that plugin. So I knew beforehand that I was going to put the next shot, the next scene into the head of the character. So super important to put that window in the Joysticks and Sliders controller, as well as an empty comp to make sure that our curtains were in there for when we made that. So let's hop into this glass texture inside of the face. This was a lot of trial and error because I really didn't know how to get this look. So as you can see, there's a lot of different effects on the side, but the main thing was that I wanted it to look 3D, like it had a glass refracting texture. So in order to do that, I put the original background inside of a pre-comp and I added the motion tile effect onto it. Because we are pushing into the scene, I wanted to make sure that there was no loss of resolution. You can't really see the edges or how it's basically mirrored because inside of the glass, it's so distorted. But I know for sure that you would be able to see the low resolution if we just scan in and then I just duplicated it just to fill in some of these gaps because it did have a alpha channel so uh, these gaps were a little empty so I just basically duplicated them move, moved them around and made them fit inside of the holes and then for the effects so let's kind of break this down I first made sure to map the texture inside of the shape layer that I used on our joysticks and sliders controller and then I added just a soft blur to it. I added this sphere to get that stretching bulge look. And I know the color is different inside of the pre-comp, but I actually turned it black and white because I wanted it to have more of a transparent look. I added the CC glass to keep the consistency throughout. And then I added a uh, Red Giants Universe RGB separation. A lot of time glass refraction has that uh, like color separation. And then I just added a small color curves. Altogether, it gives this very cool glass look. Instead of having to render out a glass UV map in Cinema 4D. And then finally, let's move into our curtains. So this is interesting. I initially wanted this to be like frame by frame animation but I was able to figure out how to do this with using just simple shape layers inside After Effects. So I separated each panel of the curtain with its own shape layer, and then I created different bend effects on the individual curtains so it had more of a organic feel. So they're all going at different speeds. And then I basically duplicated the other side made it flow in the correct direction in which the face was turning its head to, because I wanted it to feel like it was kind of like blowing in the wind. So then I actually added a wave warp to the bottom and the top of the curtains to make it feel more airy. The reason why I made them individual was because I wanted more freedom with the gradient on each one. I wanted them to feel kind of like flaps. Next episode, we're gonna be getting into scene four. There's a lot of issues that I ran into for this. So I'm gonna show you what to do and what not to do if you are in that position. And that's gonna be it for us today. This is part three of the five part series. Tomorrow I'm gonna be posting part four. So make sure to check that out. And if you're watching this in the future, then the video is already out. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I hope that you have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.